just going to start off by saying here that this video is for anybody out there who has started a project on their car, maybe had some kind of issue with their engine, pulled the engine out of the car, got it all torn down, and now they're sitting here in the position that I'm in, looking at all these parts and thinking, you know, they don't really look bad. You know, there's nothing real majorly wrong with any of them. Nothing's broken, cracked. Uh, this is all pretty much how we pulled it apart. We've wiped things down a little bit, but mostly just oil and a little bit of grime on everything. And you may be wondering, you know, how do I know if there's anything wrong with these parts? Do I need to replace any of them? Do I need to send them out to a machine shop? So today we're going to give you some of the tools that you can use to start to figure out the answers to some of those questions. What we have here is a Mazda Miata 1.8 liter engine out of Corey's car over there. This engine he uses on the track in his Miata and it's been burning a heck of a lot of oil. Somewhere in the range of about a quart for every 300 miles, which is pretty excessive. It's making a lot of smoke. And on top of that, when we went to go pull this out of the car, we found a little bit of metal in the oil, which we actually weren't expecting. We were just coming in to deal with the oil consumption issue, but we found a little bit of glitter in the oil. And so not surprisingly, when we got it torn apart, we found some damage to the bearings. So this is one of the bearings from the connecting rod. You can see there's some damage there. There's even some little pieces of it missing. So that gave us even a little more concern about measuring the crankshaft, making sure everything was still in spec, and then of course measuring the block as well before we decide how we're going to remedy the situation. So again, this is for anybody out there who's in this similar situation, not exactly sure what to do. We'll show you how to get some basic measurements, which will give you a clue to what's going on and how to proceed. We've got a kit here. It's got four different sizes of micrometers. These will allow us to measure down to one ten thousandth of an inch. We have four different sizes, and then we have these T gauges that we'll use to measure the inside of the bore. And then from there, we can use the micrometer around the outside of it, and maybe the right size one here. So that'll allow us to measure the inside diameters, and then the micrometers themselves can be used directly to measure the diameters of the bearing journals. When doing the measurements on the engine, what you're going to start to figure out is that for both the engine block itself and for the crankshaft, everything that we're going to be measuring on there are cylinders. So now when measuring something that has a cylinder shape to it, there's a couple of key measurements that will tell us everything that we need to know. The first and most obvious one is going to be the diameter of it. So at any given point, we can take the micrometer and measure the diameter of one location. And so we'll do that for all of them. And then for the cylinders as well, we'll use the T gauge, size that into the actual cylinder up against the walls, and then we can measure it with a micrometer. So that will give us our very first indication of the actual diameter of these cylinders, as well as the bearing journals. But when you're looking at these, the diameter is important, but what's more important is the actual three-dimensional shape of that cylinder. And so to do that, there's a couple of simple measurements and calculations we can do that will tell us 
you know, if that cylinder truly is a cylinder shape. So when you take the measurement of anything that's a cylinder shape, you of course can easily get the diameter of it. That's no problem. One quick measurement, tell you the diameter. However, when we're concerned with the actual measurements of the block and the uh, connecting rod journals and the main bearing journals, we're not just concerned about what the diameter is. That's the very first thing, but it's also incredibly important that it's not out of round or tapered. So those measurements out of round would be if you were looking up at the bottom of the cylinder, it should be perfectly round or as close as that's going to be. And what you need to measure is to make sure that it's not an oval. So the way that you do that is you take multiple measurements across this direction. So that's measurement A and also then across this way measurement B. Now, when you take the difference between A and B, that is going to tell you whether or not you're out of round. So for in this example here, if you took measurement A across this way and measurement B across this way, then you'd see the difference between those is going to be rather large versus on a perfect circle, when you subtract the measurements A and B, you should come up with zero. So that will tell you, if your measurement comes out to exactly zero, that will tell you that it's perfectly round. If not, then you're gonna get a number here that will compare to the specification for that part of the engine, and they'll tell us whether or not that that's okay or if it needs to be machined. The other part of the measurement that we need to do is to look for taper. So in the perfect world, the sides of these cylinders are completely straight. However, as things wear, you can end up getting a little bit of a taper or basically them not being parallel. So there's your cylinder. It's a bit exaggerated, of course. And now you won't be able to see any of this with the naked eye, which is why we have the micrometers, so we can measure down to thousandths of an inch, which will tell us whether or not we're in spec. So to find taper, it's a pretty straightforward measurement. You measure the diameter at the top, we'll call this A, diameter at the bottom, B, and then similarly to the out of round measurement, A minus B, in a perfect world, if everything is perfect and straight, will be zero. If it's not zero, then now we know how much taper we have on our cylinder. And so again, not to be confusing, that everything that we're going to be measuring on the engine is a cylinder as far as geometry. Um, but however, the, the block, they're called cylinders, and on the crankshaft, it will be the connecting rod journals and the main bearing journals. So now we come back to our engine here. And just as we talked about at the whiteboard, we're going to take a couple of different measurements here that will show us both the taper and the out of round. So for example, on this main bearing journal, we'll take measurements to find the taper. You'll measure towards the one side and then towards the other side. And then the difference between those will tell you if there's any taper in that bearing journal. And then for out of round, similarly, we'll take a measurement in this direction and then we'll take a measurement 90 degrees off of it. And then the difference between those two measurements 
will tell us the out of round. And again, every engine is going to have slightly different specs. But for this engine, this is a Miata 1.8 liter. The specs for this are about half. I guess the, actually the maximum spec is about half of one one thousandth. So that's 0 0.0005 is the maximum, and that's in inches. So then we'll do that same thing for all of the main bearings, as well as all of the rod journals. And then a very similar thing on the cylinders. We'll use the T-gauge, and we'll check both in this direction and in this direction to tell us out of round. And then we'll do the same thing towards the bottom of the cylinder. You'll want to go about as far down as the piston will travel. So a couple inches usually, you'll be able to see sometimes the marks where the pistons have traveled on there. Because there is some portion of the cylinder down there that does not have contact with the piston and is less critical as far as its measurements. So it's the same thing, we'll measure this way and this way. And then that will tell us both out of round and taper by doing the simple calculations for the cylinders and for the crankshaft. So when you compare those then for the specifications and most manufacturers will give you in the service manual, they'll give you two sets of specifications. One is how it was made when it was new, which will usually be very tight tolerances. And then most of them will offer break. Most of them will also offer a service limit, which is to say, you know, it may be slightly out of the original manufacturing specs, but it will still run okay. And then if you're outside of that, then you definitely need to either replace parts or have them machined. And then the other measurement that we haven't talked about yet, but is very critical to the operation of the engine is piston to wall clearance. And so that's the actual space available between the piston and the cylinder wall. You can see it fits in there, but it's very snug. And the way that we'll measure that is we already have a very good idea of what's going on with the cylinder with our out of round and taper measurements. And then on the piston, we'll measure right in this area down here sort of towards the bottom of the piston skirt. You don't want to go all the way to the bottom, but down on the edges here of the piston skirt, that's going to be the widest part of the piston. And that's going to be the location that defines your piston to wall clearance, because that's what keeps the piston from rocking back and forth inside the cylinder. And so then you'll take that measurement, compare it to the cylinder measurement, and the difference there will give you your piston to wall clearance. So for that, most OEM cast pistons like this will be in a range of about one to two thousandths. However, aftermarket pistons or even engines that came with forged pistons from the factory, forged pistons will tend to grow just a little bit more. And so depending on the exact manufacturer and also how it's being used, the clearance tends to be between, let's say, two and four thousandths. But that's something a lot of times when you buy aftermarket pistons, they will tell you what kind of clearances they expect. And there may also be modifying factors for if you're running a turbo, nitrous, supercharger, you know, if you're racing with the engine versus just running on the street, because all that additional heat translates into more growth of the piston and then you'll need more clearance at the time of assembly to allow for that. To do all these measurements, we ended up spending about an hour and a half, and we recorded all of that, and it's a bit tedious to watch, so we'll speed that up into about a minute or two.
So you can see the whole process, and then at the end of the video, we'll share the actual measurement data from this.